Training and walking with your dog is a team effort and you're half the team. So while your dog works hard on their skills, today we're going to talk about what you can do in just a few minutes of practice to become a better handler for your dog, which will result in a happier partnership and better loose leash walking skills for both of you. Leash handling is a mechanical skill, just like training is a skill. And in this video, you're going to not only learn what kind of leash professionals prefer, and why, but also learn how to handle a leash with precision and confidence, just like a pro trainer. And professional leash skills will help you get professional training results. Hi, I'm Laura from Doggy U, and I'm a certified guide dog mobility instructor, service dog trainer, and trick trainer. Today I'm going to show you how to get faster loose leash walking results, help prevent forging or dogs that want to walk just slightly ahead of you, and how to get your reinforcement strategy mechanics in place so you can have more pleasant walks with your dog in heel position. A little short term practice with your treat placement and leash handling will yield long term results. And stick around to the end of this video to learn an exercise that you can do to not only benefit your skills, but also start building strong loose leash walking foundations for your dog too. First, we need some gear. The type of leash I use is a multifunction leash. I use a multifunction leash so that I have the option of making it long or short. Long for potty and for just letting them be a dog, and short for healing or loose leash walking. If you haven't seen my video on harness versus collar and loose leash walking strategies and how to preserve your loose leash walking skills, I'll link that video here and down below for you to watch after. The first leash that I use pretty frequently is one made by Bold Lead Design. It's a longer multifunction leash that comes in a leather or a biothane. I like the feel of leather because it's a little more traditional and it kind of throws back to my horse background. But I also like the biothane because it never gets dirty or wet. Both are really good options. It's definitely an investment for a quality leash, but they last forever. Another leash that I highly recommend is the Blue 9 Multifunction Leash. It comes in a variety of colors and is very cost effective. I love to use it for young dogs or puppies that might chew on my leash by accident. It has all of the multifunction ability of becoming long, short, or over the shoulder, so it's a great option for those looking for an inexpensive but still high quality and very functional leash. In each of these cases, I use it in its longest mode on the back clip of a harness for walks where I'm not working on loose leash walking specifically and shorten on the collar or on the front clip of a Y harness if I'm focusing on my dog and training, in a store, or anytime I need the dog in a tighter heel position. Treats. I like to use a trail mix of treats to keep my dog's interest and so they never know what they're going to get. I have a video that goes over specifically how I prepare the trail mix and I'll link that up here. But I'll also drop a few of my favorites down below so that if you don't want to prepare anything, you can just pick them up at the store. The most important part is that they need to be very small, generally soft, and easily swallowed without chewing. Next, you're gonna need a treat pouch to hold your reinforcers. I have two treat pouches that I tend to use pretty regularly. The first is my Ollie Dog Backcountry Dry Bag, which holds a lot of treats. For those that are just training one dog, the regular Ollie Dog treat pouch works really well. The other pouch I use pretty often is more of a fanny pack from Refwear. I put a little silicone pocket in it that has my treats in it, and then I can just pop it right back in the fridge when I'm done. Okay, so now that we have our gear, we wanna think about how we deliver that reinforcement and also how we hold the leash. Let's start with the leash. Here's a couple ways to hold the leash effectively and tips to prevent injury to you and your dog. First, the leash is never wrapped around your wrist or hand. That's a good way to break a wrist or fingers if your dog unexpectedly takes off. Also, please don't hang stuff off the end of your leash, which can cause it to feel unbalanced, or you can also accidentally smack your dog in the face with it. If you need poop bags, which most people do, shove them in your handy dandy treat pouch instead of hanging them off the end of the leash. Anything you need to carry goes on you, not the dog, unless you're gonna use a well-balanced, close to the body backpack on the dog. Otherwise, get a fanny pack style treat pouch that can hold all your stuff. Now, I walk my dog on the left-hand side because I like to keep my dominant hand, my right hand, free once my dog is fully trained and I only have to hold the leash with one hand, my left hand, or eventually maybe with both hands free. But there's definitely no rules about this, so you can walk your dog on the right if that feels more comfortable for you. It's really helpful to teach your dog to walk on both sides eventually. So if I'm training my dog on my left, while I'm working on my training, I want to be able to easily switch the lead to my right hand so that I can treat with my left hand. More on that and why I do that in a minute. To start my leash handling skills, I want to use two hands. The left hand holds loosely and closer to the dog, and the right hand holds the remainder of the leash gathered up. With this method, the leash crosses in front of your body and there isn't a ton of slack for you to get caught up in. 
Remember, a leash can be loose with only a few inches of slack, so you don't need to give your dog three feet to wander off on, especially when you first start leash training. Once my dog is trained, I gather the leash in my left hand. This leaves my right hand free to give out sweet high fives. So let's talk about how to show the dog what we want by reinforcing behavior we like when the dog is walking close to us in heel position and how to hold the leash when we do that. But before we do that, if you found this video helpful so far, please take a second to reinforce me by booping that like button down below. Cool Whip Jake and I would be so grateful. So when the dog is walking in heel position, we want to mark and reinforce the dog in line with our pant seam on the same side that the dog is walking on. This is really important. Many people like to walk the dog on the left, but reward across the body from their right hand. What this does is cause the dog to look ahead of your body to the right and potentially cross in front of you and trip you, or at a minimum can cause them to forge ahead looking for the reinforcement across your body. While it can be hard at first to learn how to use your left hand to grab a cookie for your dog, you can make the behavior more automatic for yourself by putting your treat pouch on the same side as your dog so that reaching with the left hand makes the most sense. We want to create a reinforcement zone right at our pant seam so our dog is drawn to remaining at our side right where our reinforcement is delivered. And if you need help teaching your dog how to get into heel position or training a come to heel, definitely check out the Doggy U community at patreon.com slash doggyu, where I have more than 100 Patreon exclusive training videos, including one on how to teach your dog to find heel position. You can join for as little as $3 at the link down below. With our tree pouch positioned slightly behind us so it doesn't block our dog's ability to look up at us, we collect the slack of the leash with our right hand and treat from our left hand right down our pant leg. I like to reward straight in front of the dog or even slightly to the outside of their face. This causes them to stay straight or tip their butt in slightly instead of tip their butt out and crossing in front of me. Keeping your hand in line with your leg also creates a target for your dog to hit and can be a great way to keep your dog in line with you. You can also use your touch cue to reinforce the walking position. So it goes touch, click, treat, touch, click, treat. Once you're done feeding, you can simply pick up the leash with your left hand and let some slack out of your right hand so that your right hand is resting comfortably by your side again. Because the mechanics on this will be new to you, it'll take some practice to get it into your muscle memory. I suggest starting simple with an exercise you can do at home. The exercise is about you getting a chance to practice and develop a pattern for yourself. You'll start with your dog in a sit, even on a foot target or a platform if necessary, to help them maintain position. Your dog is just along for the ride as a mouth target for your hand at this point, so you can gauge where your treat hand should land. But the bonus is that it's a great start to creating that reinforcement zone for your dog. Once you've got your mechanics down, try taking one step, marking and reinforcing, then two steps, then walking around your house. If you don't practice your healing inside, you'll definitely have a hard time outside. So get into a nice rhythm at home before taking it outside to your driveway, then your yard, and then out on the road. And if you want to learn more about next steps to train loose leash walking and the strategy I use to maintain it, check out the videos linked down in the description below. So remember, this is a partnership. The more you can be consistent with your dog, the better your walks together will be. And if you want to learn more about loose leash walking strategies, this is the next video for you. So you should click on it now. You all have an awesome day and happy training.